Balenciaga show. Legitimately, maybe one of my favorite shows that happened during Paris Fashion Week. Um, again, another reminder of just how amazing Demner is as, as a designer. And I think nowadays, it feels like he's getting the respect that he deserves. I think, oddly enough, even though I didn't, I didn't understand it and I was really angry about it because I'm a, I love it. It's legitimately one of my favorite brands in Vetemar. But I do understand now why he decided to kind of step away publicly and kind of distance himself from that brand and give it to whoever he gave it to, even though I still think he does some stuff for it secretly. But still, and just commit himself to doing Balenciaga only. Because I think people are now taking him a lot more serious as a designer because he's not doing the kind of irony plaid, the irony clad stuff he was doing at Vetemar, which is kind of, it felt like a a teenage angst of somebody that always wanted to get involved in fashion, finally got involved in fashion, got all that love and adjacent they wanted, but kind of despised and sort of like, um, just, yeah, kind of despised the adoration they were getting because they were like, oh, you didn't care about me when I was outside the, outside in Georgia or interning in these like, random houses and places, not getting recognition I wanted. And all of a sudden, I'm the darling of the scene. Everyone wants to be my friend. It kind of felt that way. But anyway, that aside, he stepped, you know, directly into the Balenciaga thing. He's obviously doing Couture there now and he's doing that full time. He's taking that more seriously. And it feels like people are now giving him the love and adoration that he kind of needs and deserves for the work that he's done over the years, especially when it comes just in terms of silhouettes and shapes that he's kind of, um, you know, revolutionized and basically created an entire genre, an entire industry based on his shapes of the cuts that he basically does from hoodies to trousers to blazer jackets to the length of coats and parkas. That's just amazing. It's fantastic. And this is maybe one of the most one of the best and maybe most forward thinking shows that I've ever think he's probably put together. Um, Obviously, there was a great um, Little Simpsons uh, movie or film that they put together um, because um, Demner is supposed to be a massive fan of Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons. He kind of called him up, basically said, you know, I wouldn't be who I am without you. And they put together this amazing little um, tribute to fashion and shows and in general and then kind of, you know, threw in some great jokes and some great kind of lessons about inclusivity and took fun about fa and kind of shone a lens back at the fashion industry and took the piss out of them. Like, it was just a great fun moment, right? Just to kind of lighten the mood. But what the really great thing I loved about it was this red carpet entrance thing they had, right? Before they headed into the auditorium to kind of watch the Simpsons movie. Now, some of the people that were in the show knew they were in the show, but other guests who attended were, t were getting pictures taken on the red carpet, quote unquote, with cameras around and people shouting at them and screaming at them and, you know, um, handlers moving them along when they got their pictures done. And they didn't know, unbeknownst to them, that some of the people that were walking that red carpet were actually models that were featured in the actual final, um, you know, r runway shots of the actual show itself. But they were superseding people. So it was like a lot of kind of, you know, are you the participant? Are you the viewer? Um, are you just a voyeur on the side? Like, it was really cool to see that kind of democratization, that kind of level playing field of fashion taking part. Like, we're watching on stream. We're obviously taking part in one way, like a kind of Met Gallery type thing. And the people that are there are also kind of not sure if they're part of the show, just there as a guest. It kind of really created this really cool tension and just made it a bit fun, right? Do you know what I mean? It kind of just made it a bit more fun, a little bit more loose. And um, we see some great pictures here, obviously. Boss it looking amazing. Obviously, got Dev Hines in there looking great. Like, just some great images, right? But let's actually go through the um, collection itself. Well, no, let's actually read a little bit here of the GQ review because I think this lady, Rachel, actually wrote some core cool pieces that kind of touch on why this was awesome. So, this is courtesy of GQ. It says, uh, Balenciaga takes Springfield. It says, now that social media has made us all famous, it can be hard to say what fame actually means. Does it mean a lot of followers, a career doing the things that are special or at least things everyone cares about? Perhaps it's about the kind of magnetism. Or is it in fact simply the culture of fame, that things that float around it, that define it? That's why I started thinking at the Balenciaga show on Saturday night um, in which the fashion audience, usually in its position of judge and curator, was pretty brilliantly swapped into the role of star and then just quickly lulled back into the thankless role of spectator. The evening began with an uncanny red carpet with attendees doing a step and repeat in front of the screaming photographers either on purpose or because they accidentally went the wrong way it was testament to the creative director Demner's ability to take the most banal archetypes and make you question their reality it was really just like fame itself sometimes you caught it sometimes a bunch of people just take photos of you looking stupid there was a huge throng of French teenagers outside screaming trying to tell the difference between faceless fashion editors and the actual celebrities like Elliot Page Offset and Cardi B and once inside of the theater of the theater de chalet of the Hamusun era opera house guests sang into their velvet chairs and looked up on the screen and where the red carpet scrum outside was being streamed suddenly a classic Balenciaga looker in hysterical size black ground appeared and a number of attendees on the second and third tiers of the balcony many Balenciaga 
Uber employees began screaming and clapping. Oh, we all realized at once the red carpet procession was the show, right? So it's incredible to see, isn't it? Like, so, so cool. Um, so you can actually see some images, uh, read actually some more comments here from Demna, courtesy of Vogue Mag. It says, well, remark Demna Vasilia. Um, uh, Vasa Vassal, I said that. Vassa, Vassalia, yeah, Vassalia, yeah. Um, with a considerable amount of um, laconic understatement, we needed something fun to happen with an epic stroke of his genius for messing with the fashion conventions and absurdist social media commentary. He staged a Balenciaga return to Paris that was both fake red carpet celebrity studded, movie star premiere, and a real one. He said, I wanted to do a premiere concept where the guests would uh, be the show for so many seasons. It was nice to have a social occasion to be again. I hoped that it would make people smile smile it was absolutely hysterical right so this is what a great way to kind of welcome back the return of shows by doing it this way and like i said from the pictures that i saw of the street style image especially from vogue in paris it looked like the energy had finally returned new york kind of looked pretty work good as well but when it suddenly got to paris which is obviously the main place that people actually want to go to that's where the actual business happens and the actual big you know big ticket names and brands and houses are actually situated it was great to see so many people just like reinvigorate to be out there again and i think part of it had to do with the kind of lightness of touch that a lot of designers were kind of approaching the fashion with the fact that the models were walking down the runway sans a face mask too there's just a little bit of a inclination that we might be kind of get, go, getting over the best the worst of times that we're in obviously with the pandemic um so obviously the show itself pick out some again just just imagine you're on the red carpet you get your guest there you don't know if you're going to be in the runway pictures or if you're going to just be a, a guest just kind of watching the show live streamed as you're sat in this massive auditorium watching you know um this amazing clip of the simpsons but yeah just incredibly well put together again the shapes the jackets the cuts of it all stuff that i love and i love um the hoodies the blazers like the model choices as well the bags, the accessories. Like, just look how great all of that is. Like, just such a casual, um, comfy look. That's the thing. He just makes... He has the ability to take such, like, banal, everyday items. Like, you know, this is a kind of long sleeve turtleneck top thing. Some lounge pants, some great shoes. And it just it just luxes it up. I don't know how he does it. It's just such an expert way. Maybe it's the education of Margiela, the education of Louis Vuitton. But even the hoodie, right? He's actually taking the hoodie to all different... All the, that's not a hoodie. That's actually a track, a track jacket with, like, a scarf in between but still that kind of silhouette has been elevated to such a level now that it's now become somewhat chic do you know what I mean like this kind of babushka kind of central european eastern european look has now become a something that everyone kind of covets and it's just awesome to see i'm not going to lie like his parkers are always sensational like you know i love i love a good eyeliner like that as well um it reminds me of like you know uh bands in the 80s and stuff like you know what i mean they're just amazing but look at the shape of that parker right you got that kind of balloon kind of bubble shape thing that he has going on where it's sort of like a a, a triangle from the side this you know the shape is going to be banging hopefully it will come in some great colors got great pockets like just awesome stuff it kind of reminds me do you remember the time reading an interview with rick owens where he said he always tries to make his jackets uh big enough no he tries to make his jackets with pockets big enough to stick a sandwich in the book in it right so people can kind of go out and sort of like live in his jackets and kind of wear them and wear them in situ and kind of experience them get some creases in them some folds in them and i've always kind of you, thought that was a cool way to kind of look at fashion design right i want to make it avant-garde I want to push the envelope, but I also want to make it functional. I always want to make it practical. People can actually use it in their day-to-day -day lives. And I think that's sick to see. Um, but yeah, so many good things. Interesting bits of footwear that I'm going to show you in the next sort of slide. You've got Jürgen Teller here looking pretty sick. He's been all over the place lately. He's wearing this amazing inside-out, outside-in um, Parker. Um, sorry, Parker um, overcoat that basically looks amazing and pretty sick on him. He looks like a great model as well for Balenciaga, by the way. Um, that's cool to see. So really, really loads of great stuff here. Let's continue. I think there's a couple of bits here I wanted to show you that I was really a big fan of. Where am I going to find it? Again, great shit overall. Great bags, great shapes. The color palette's awesome too, right? Loads of blacks, grays, blues, blacks, silvers. Do you know what I mean? Like, just really, really well done. Like, look at this. Look at this look. Look how great this look does. Like... Especially the model choices. Well, the casting's always amazing with Balenciaga in general. Massive acrylic nails. These boots are just so, so well done. Simple. And a, and a great thing about Balenciaga, similar to like Vetemar when that first started, I always loved it, especially when Lotta Vol Volkova, what's her name? I forgot her surname, but 
when she was styling for Vetima and obviously for Blanchard, I think now she's working with Miu Miu and Mark Jacobs and stuff. But when she was styling with them, obviously she's a supreme stylist. She's got a really great style herself. Um, follow her Instagram, like even that with the mesh top. Even that's a great Bergheim look. Um, it was always great to watch Balenciaga and Ventima shows because you've got really great styling tips for things that you could easily find yourself in vintage shops and whatnot, right? Or secondhand or secondhand stores or eBay and whatnot. Like, look at this look. You could easily find a similar dress like this, a bag like that, but trousers or trousers or shoes like that. I could basically um, copy that look. Even this look that I love to go to the Bergheim, right? You could find the jacket of the similar sort of shape and style to that in easily in some leather shop down Brick Lane somewhere. And you could replicate that look and, you know, put that on and go to some sort of, you know, go to an event at the cause or at the color factory and look amazing. Like, look at this. Look how great that look. That's like such an amazing look, man. Really, really, really look it. I love everything about it. Again, Blenchyog is one of my favorites. Again, look at that tracksuit like that is just eastern european central european chic there oversized looks amazing probably gonna see justin bieber wearing something similar very very soon but again the entire collection was sick i loved everything about it um can't wait to see it in stores of course it's going to look absolutely banging and then to end it of course we've got dev Hines there we've got some footwear too that was shown some new footwear from balenciaga that's kind of interesting in terms of their shapes in terms of what they're trying to do trying to push the envelope somewhat because i'm kind of split when it comes to fashion shoes i don't really like when they just copy athletic brands already that exist i think it's quite lazy i do prefer it when they try and do different things and try and mix things up a little bit but i also do like when they take the conventional standard athletic shoe and kind of really like take it to a point where you're kind of questioning whether or not you like it or not like the triple s is a good example right is take away all the soles it's just a standard athletic shoe right but then as soon as you max them you max out the soles and you make it triple you make the the upper really beefy and it's heavy and it doesn't look it doesn't look clunky well i remember there's one guy actually messaging me on instagram asked me if you could train in a pair of flipping triple s's like this guy's out of his brain but in general right, i love the fact that they're able to do that and take it to the next step and look at this this is basically balenciaga's iteration of a croc that's also incorporated stuff that you'd see from like a new rock boot right so they've got these faux i'm assuming they're faux sort of like metal plates at the front and screws and whatnot it's just a balenciaga i don't think it's actually a collaboration it doesn't look like a collaboration it's like a a full-on balenciaga um mule that obviously is copying what the crocs are doing and crocs are having a complete renaissance at the moment so i thought that's a really good flip and iteration of what's going on and then you've got this shoe which is kind of more of a quintessential running shoe athletic shoe but then they've put this massive tire essentially it looks like a tire that you'd find maybe from a, on a mountain bike or like a or like a yeah basically a mountain bike a cross country yeah yeah like a cross country bike whatever it may be and they put that on the outer and it looks so sick and again it's quite deceptive because it looks quite thick but it's not if you kind of think about the end of the sole and where the midsole meets i think this i think there's not much room it's probably just about you know a couple of millimeters so it's not as thick as it actually looks but it does look quite bulbous and shit and then it's got this kind of again this sort of distressy kind of look to it where it's kind of looks like it's been left because again i don't know how he does it i don't know if it's this treatment where everything just looks a little bit dusty especially the black shoes they look like they've been left on a shoe rack somewhere in the middle of some sort of like you know goodwill shop in the middle of ukraine that he picked up somewhere do you know what i mean i love that kind of finish that they have with them again this is just like me just geeking out on this shit because again you know i love them uh, them as my guy um him and rick owens are definitely guys that i kind of look up to in terms of how they approach design and then just to kind of go far out and really make you question everything they've got these two models that are more futuristic have a little bit more of a different look maybe they're kind of all one piece molded i'm not too sure how they're basically done but they look incredible right in terms of how they look in terms of visually as a design piece very different to anything you're going to see in the market at the moment and again they make you kind of question whether or not you um, are a fan of these shoes or not whether or not you found the brand or not i love everything about it and again it's taking elevating like a standard african uncle shoe that you'd find from like some barbershop somewhere being sold at the front of the window and it's kind of luxed it up futuristic future yeah brought it into the future right future proofed it or some or some way shape or form and now we've got this amazing shoe and how it looks there so yeah blends uh was it for 2022 was again easily one of my favorite collections that i've seen so far from paris definitely up there with some of the best and again a reminder that them the really is in league of his own man like look at that look with the jeans like it just looks great even like look how great these those kind of crocs look in person right 
Look at that. Elliot Page. Really. Look at how good they look. They look so fucking good. They're going to be really popular when they come out, though. You know, you already know they're going to be popular. If those... I forgot who did them. Was it Blanchard? Yeah, Blanchard did a collaboration with Crocs before, right? They were super stacked and they were high and they sold out in minutes. So I'm assuming they're going to be fairly expensive and fairly popular with people too. So yeah, big up Denmark, big up Blanchard for, I mean, sorry, spring 2022, ready to wear collection. Easily one of my favorites that I saw during Paris Fashion Week. No doubt, no doubt.